Yeah. Why am I doing this? Oh, I got something to tell you guys. Yes. So here's the deal. I have studied this next generation NCLEX exam for now six months. I've had the opportunity since it came out, which was April, now it's October, to literally do a data analysis on what happened since the test came out with your scores. In other words, are you passing more? Are you failing more? Good news there. Have you been running out of time or have you utilized the time? Have you been screwed by the case studies or did they help some people? So what am I saying? Do not take your test before you listen to this video. Because what I now know that I want you to know is that you might be focusing all your energies and attention and effort on the wrong things to prepare for this NGN NCLEX exam. Because what we have now learned after six months of taking this test is that there are key areas of failure that are coming up again and again and again. Because you gotta remember, I have that PhD in this. And so I know how to evaluate the data on this. And what I have seen is kind of like, oh my God, We've got to rethink the new next generation NCLEX exam, the NGN exam. We have to make sure when we teach our students or when I help you or when you go to study that you are studying in a way that you're going to pass this new test. Now, I always give you the truth and the honesty about the test because, you know, you're kind of surprised when you call me and you give me your $25 cash app or $25 um, on PayPal to do a consultation where I call you up. You're always shocked that I called you. I call you up. I get your history. I, I make sure that the history that I collected was accurate. And right there on the phone, we develop a plan for you to pass this test. $25, nothing. I send you free material and you get your shit together and pass the test. Well, what I have seen in those consultations, what I have picked up in those consultations and what I have seen when you send me candidate reports and what I have learned just in my own classroom up in Ohio is that there are very, very huge, huge changes that are taking place on this next generation test. So I don't want you to take your test until you realize what you're doing. So let's get started. Here's the deal. In my hand are a bunch of pink packets. You know that these are available in the pink packet bundle on my NCLEX prep shop. There's always a link put in the the HETV YouTube channel somewhere, right? But I want you to understand why these pink packets play a role. So let's put these down because you saw reduction of risk on one of them, and that's just a little hint. And let's look at the, the key components that we've learned since this test came out. Here we go. Let's make sure we even know what the new test is in terms of what it differs with, right? Let's just make sure we're clear on that. Here we go. The 2023 NCSBN test plan, National Council State Board of Nursing test plan, which is what they call what they're basing all their questions on. This test plan is 85 to 150 questions. And if you've watched my other videos, you know that if you failed in 85 questions, you killed everybody. You need a review real quick. If you failed in 150 questions, maybe not because you almost made it. So with a little fine tuning, maybe a consultation with yours truly, you and I together can develop a plan where you pass your test. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's important. Now you could fail anywhere in between here, but the minimum is 85 and the maximum is 150. The other issue is this test now is five hours flat for everybody, LP and RN, it doesn't matter, five hours flat, right? You know that. There are at least three case studies that are unfolding. Unfolding case studies means there's six questions per case study. If you just did the math, three case studies, six questions each, 18 questions for a total of the case studies that matter. Some may not matter, some might matter. Remember, they always throw out a certain amount of questions. Then when you look at the 
changes that took place on this next generation NCLEX exam, NGN. We know that they put more infectious diseases on the test because you acted like a fool with COVID and kind of embarrassed the nursing community by saying things that made no sense and following social media's lies and fake news, even though you went to school to be a nurse, which is really scandalous that you were believing all of this fake news. Mm. And they put increased pharmacology. Now that makes sense. I don't know how many of you followed the Redonda DeVault case. I certainly made my students watch it because I wanted them to see how something as simple as not knowing the generic name for a medication can kill a 73 year old patient and almost send a nurse of three years to jail. Ooh, so there you go. They saw it, I saw it, you heard it, we know it. They need more pharmacology on the test. So that's what you're gonna get, more pharmacology. But don't get it twisted, it's not more math. I tell you to ignore math. No, it's pharmacology, medications, okay? Now, let's look at good news and bad news and tell you what we've learned in the last six months of this test so that you don't take a test until you really know some of these issues. Here we go. The good news is you guys have excellent performance on case studies. Stop worrying about case studies. They're not your weakness. You guys are kicking ass, taking names, tearing the club up with the case studies. You like case studies. I do too. They make more sense, don't they? It's like common sense kind of case studies. Well, guess what? That's not your issue. No, it's almost like the test came out in April and up until April, everybody started thinking, oh my God, we've got to focus on case studies. We've got to make sure we know our shit with these case studies. And then what happened was you studied so much on the case studies that you now know case studies better than the test taker, the test giver. I mean, for real, you're tearing the club up. And so I want you to, yes, study case studies, understand them, know how they're like structured, but stop wasting too much time on the case studies because you're getting aboves in your case studies and you're getting real low belows in some of these other subjects. And I just have to tell you that I am seeing more belows on test reports than I'm seeing ever in the history of NCLEX. So people get all these aboves on the case study and then all these belows in the regular subjects and it's like, oh God, this is gonna be a problem, okay? What else is good news? Well, because you have more time to take this test and remember why I say more time, it used to be that you had an RN test and it was like 265 questions. You had six hours. Now you do the math. Now we have a max of 150, almost like half of the original test numbers, 265, now 150. We had 265 in six hours. We got 150 in five hours. That's a lot more time to successfully read the question and answer it appropriately. And you are showing that by the sake that you don't run out of time anymore. In other words, very few students are running out of time on this test, whereas in the past, people ran out of time a lot, okay? All right, just, just so you know. I mean, this is what I'm seeing. I'm doing the analysis of what I'm seeing, okay? Next is, you know that the new test changed in a way that benefited most people to the nth degree. And that was, they give you partial credit for those select alls, right? You already know this. So when you do a select all, instead of getting all of it wrong because you didn't select the right amount of options, no, for the ones that you selected, you get credit for that. Now, what does that do? What has that shown me in the last six months? The fact that you get partial credit, the fact that you're doing really well on case studies. I need you to hear me. If you graduated years ago, if you took the test 10 times, if you are 
an English second language student, which just means that you weren't born in the United States. If you are somebody who has failed this test and gave up, if you thought this just isn't for me, no, what I'm telling you, come here. I am telling you, get your act together and take this test. Yes, I believe in my heart you can pass this test. I have seen it. I have seen people who kept failing. I've seen people who, who you know, they didn't do well in school. I've seen people who came from another country. I've seen people who graduated 20, 30 years ago, and they are passing this NCLEX exam. And there are testimonies right on my HETV site on YouTube. So this isn't just whistling Dixie. This is true shit, man. Okay. So that's good news. I'm telling you, don't give up. I can help you. You know I can help you. When I get off this little video, I'm going to take my phone and answer all these little consultations that want to talk to me for $25 and tell them how to pass the test. I'm just trying to get you to hook up early. Okay, so that's the good news. And I'm an optimist. In other words, I like to give you good news, but I'm also very practical. And I like to tell you the truth and the practicality of what you need to do when you're trying to pass this test. So here is the bad news. Are you ready? You really ready? I know it sucks ass, but I mean, we got to do this. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Here we go. The bad news is that there are four new failure areas on this test. What do I mean by four new failure areas? Well, all of us knew that basic care and comfort was always number one. But honestly, it's being tied. Like it's a tie now. It used to be number one no matter what. No, it's tied. You know what it's tied with? Look at this. Reduction of risk. Infectious diseases. Pharmacology and here's one that always throws you a curveball. Physiological adaptation. And then lastly, I don't know why, when I look at one subject that you're not doing well in, psych is another subject that is increasing in failure. But let's take these one at a time, shall we? Reduction of risk is really procedures. When I go over your candidate report with you for that counsel, that $25 consultation, I ask you, do you know what reduction of risk is? And you never do. Well, this is what it is. It's IVs. It's blood administration. It's all kinds of procedures. It's your central lines. It's your trachs and trach suctioning. It's your tube feedings. Okay. It's your, I mean, I could go on and on. I have a million things in here. It's your oscopy procedures like endoscopy, colonoscopy, all those oscopy procedures. Now, I was just on, if you look, with the oscopy procedures, that's just page 10. This whole packet, which goes to page, here we go, 21, is all procedures. Your MRIs, your EEGs, your EMGs, your CAT scans, your Glasgow scales, your ventilators, your dialysis, your blood testing, your AccuChecks, your making an ice pack, sits baths, your medication administrations, especially sub Q, your topical blood, your topical administrations, your TED hose, your anti embolic stockings, right? You know what I mean, TED hose. Okay, your sequential compression devices, your circumcision care, your incision care, your eye drops, your ear drops. Everything is in this pink packet, part of the pink packet bundle that we're going to talk about. This is an area of failure. 
Oh my God. Now, infectious disease. Infectious diseases. Oh my God. What is this? Infectious diseases. What is in here? All of your precautions, contact, droplet, airborne, standard, protective, all of the things that are going to show up one way or another on a test. What's in the packet? Antibiotics. What else is in the packet? Hmm. Vaccines. Things you know nothing about. When COVID vaccines came out, you were acting like a fool. That's why they're putting vaccines on the test, okay? How to put on your personal protective equipment. How to take it off, how to put it on, right? That's all in this packet. What is the most important part of this packet? The list of infectious diseases that you better know before you go taking this test. And if you look at these, they're in a list. Why? So you can make a flashcard from them. You need to put the disease on the front of the flashcard, the precautions on the back, and perhaps a treatment or vaccine or whatever. This is your infectious diseases. It's huge. It's a big deal. And you keep failing in it for no reason. I have what you need. Okay? Now, then if you look, there's pharmacology. Well, I just don't have one pharmacology packet. Oh, no. I have three. What is the number one pharmacology subject you need to learn and learn it well? It's so critical that you learn this category of pharmaceuticals that you world actually gives it a whole subject brand by itself. What subject of pharmaceuticals is that? Here you go. Psych meds. Remember what I've said forever. Most medications on NCLEX are psych and cardio. So there you are with a what color pink packet on psych meds. What other medications are we talking about? Well, in my pink packet bundle, you get two more. You get medication categories and pharmacology. Oh my God, what's the difference? Well, this one is based on all of the categories. So you have beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, calcium channel blockers. You have all of those category of drugs, statins. You even have more psych med information in here. Your GI drugs, your asthma meds, your TB medications, your immunodepressant DMARDs and steroids and NSAIDs and teratogens that you can't use in pregnancy. That's all in here. Well, what about in here? Well, this is created in a flashcard format, meaning that they're in a list of alphabetical order that you can make the flashcards from. But then I have something really, really cool. I have this need to know pharmacology list of the most common medications that show up on any test that any student would take a whole page and i tell people look at that page before you go in there and take your test because these are the most common meds that show up on hesse and any nclex exam and any nurse practitioner exam and any test you would take in school they're just really common meds that you have to know so this is your pharmacology now I also have management of care in that packet. And this management of care is how you learn about ethical principles, how you understand restraints, how you understand safety measures and SBAR and delegation and assignment making, workplace violence, all of that. This is management of care. Okay, you got it? I mean, and don't even get me started about the Oh My God packet. You already know where I'm gonna go with that. The Oh My God packet? Are you serious? This bad boy has prioritization in it, 
delegation again. It's got a quickie on pharmacology. It's got maternity and pediatric quickies. This is all part of the pink packet bundle. And I give this to you for the biggest discount because that right there is worth a lot of money. But I only sell it at a nominal cost. It will go up next year, believe me, because it takes a lot to make them. So, and they're going to be revised. But I'm just telling you they are available. Now, I got bad news on the bad news. The bad news on the bad news is that you guys have been failing something called physiological adaptation. There is no pink packet quickie for that. No, I'm sorry. But physiologic adaptation is really pathophysiology of, um, of all the diseases. So how does one learn about that, Shelly? How, Dr. Shelly, am I supposed to study if you don't have a pink packet on physiologic adaptation? I'm sorry, but you gotta put in the work. And the work requires time. And the time you need is the time that it will require you to watch the video content on these different diseases and if you don't know what diseases they are, like which ones you should focus on, it's on page seven in the Oh My God packet. On page seven in the Oh My God packet are all of these disease processes that you must know and know well. And here's the good news. The only way to get physiologic adaptation up to par is to increase your knowledge on content and content is videos. Now I do have my videos organized by playlist, but I'm not selfish. I love the different videos that are out there. There are a few that I absolutely think are the best. I would like to say I'm the best, but I'm not that ridiculous. I do believe I'm one of the crowd who has some of the best videos, but please don't just limit yourself to me. If you pull up a video on um, Parkinson's on my video um, playlist in, in YouTube and you need more information, maybe I didn't give you what all you needed, please look at other videos. You don't have to worry about the videos. The videos, YouTube is a blessing. It's like nursing school on TV. You got this when it comes to videos and content. You just need to know that you have to pay attention to it. Sometimes students think that all they have to do is questions, 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 and they're gonna pass this test. That's not true. You need content. Okay, now lastly, let me point out who would probably benefit from a consultation with Dr. Shelley. Here we go. Who's at really high risk for failing this test with flying colors? Like, who is it that needs to be concerned about failing? Here we go. If you are an English second language student, meaning you were not born in the United States, you are at the highest risk for failing this test. In other words, the passage rate for um, students born in America is 79%. The passage rate for ESL students is 49%. That's a huge drop. That's horrible. So you definitely need help, right? You need a little extra, more than anyone else, okay. If you are an LPN to RN, we call it like a bridge student, so you were already an LPN, now you're an RN, oh my God, you have a very high failure rate because you go and take the test having worked as a nurse thinking it can't be that bad because I passed my LPN test with flying colors and then you are still working a lot because you're now a nurse and we need nurses so bad. There's all this travel money and overtime money. And so you get the point where not only are you taking for granted the hardness of this test won't be a big deal, you're thinking it's not gonna be a big deal wrong answer, but you are also working too much to even put the time into studying for a test that is gonna be quite significantly harder. Now, the other problem with the LPN to RN is that they pick up bad habits. Very often they work in long-term care or with um, elderly patients or maybe even behavior health, and they pick up bad habits that we would never, ever, ever tolerate 
in a hospital setting. And you may not even know that they're bad habits because this is what you've been doing since you got out of school. You go take the test only to find out that everything you thought you knew was really poor nursing. Oh, that's ugly, but this is why the LPN RN has such a high failure rate. So listen, LPNs, don't be cocky. Take a little time, study your content, take notes like you did way back in school. You got to kind of go back to basics. Not to mention a lot of LPNs go to schools who are really fast, one year, 18 months, 10 months, whatever, and they ship you through there and they never review the original content that will be on this test. Yeah, okay. Who else is really high risk for failing and might need a little extra? Someone who's already failed twice. One of the things that's driving me crazy that you guys do is you fail the one test and I don't know, I don't know what it is, but you go and do something like very minimally, like Archer, which is a piece of shit. You shouldn't even, no, 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 Archer. That's too easy. Uh, it may help some people, but the majority of people will find that Archer is too easy. Proof of that is one of my students I just got off the phone with told me, well, my scores were really high on the questions. Really? Well, what question um, did you use? What question software did you use? Well, I kind of used two of them at first, but then I stopped using UWorld because it was too hard. My scores were 80s on Archer, but they were 50s and 60s on UWorld, and that's why your little ass failed. Because because that's what I've been saying the whole time. You world is harder because it has to be if it's going to prepare you for this test. So when you have failed, you cannot do the same thing you did and think you're going to get something different. In fact, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing you did to fail again, right? doing the same thing, thinking you're going to get something different. No, 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 no. When you fail once, stop right there. Think about what you're doing. Get some expert opinions. Call me up, whatever you got to do to let me help you figure out where you went wrong, number one, because some of y'all just burn or throw out the candidate report. You don't know what you're looking at. You have no idea what that language is on there. At the very least is have that report handy so I can go over it with you and you can figure out what to do differently. If you fail two or more times, what I hate to see, and you guys keep doing it, is you turn around 45 days later, 45 days later, 45. I talked to someone who graduated this year. We're talking 2023 and she already took the test five times. What the hell difference has happened since you failed? Nothing. You are failing over and over and over. And I swear to God, when I talked to her, she was scheduled to take the freaking test in two weeks. Stop it. Cut it out. Do not do that. You still don't know Jack. And here's our problem. Why? I have heard from all of you that you thought 50s and 60s were good enough scores to pass the NCLEX because the software that you were using told you you got a good chance of passing. It's all bullshit. Let's really do the math. 50 and 60% is failing when you consider 100% is perfect. So you got 100%, right? That's an A. 90% is still an A. 80% is a B. 70 is a B, is a C. And then the rest is fuck you. You're not going to pass, right? You're going to fail. Stop thinking 50s and 60s are good enough. No. 85 RNs, 75 LPNs. And LPNs, that's 75 on RN software. LPNs, if you're taking an LPN test, do not buy LPN software. Buy RN UWorld, RN anything. You need to take the RN software because the LPN software is too easy. Ooh. Who else is at really high risk for failing? Here we go. Went to a 
poorly performing nursing school. And I'm sorry, Florida, I gotta call you out because not only are the majority of your nursing schools doing really shitty, some closing, many on probation, at least with the students that I'm talking to, and this is my opinion and it's a free world and I can give it. Not only are you failing students, and, and, and having these students pay all this money and, 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 and graduate them only to fail the NCLEX. And I've had so many schools from Florida, I don't even know where to start. But I will tell you this, I almost think it's like a scam because I don't know if you're from Florida, but you need my help because what you're doing in Florida is criminal. They are making you go through poorly performing schools. They're on probation. They're closing the minute you graduate. They're not accredited. You leave that school thinking I'm prepared for NCLEX. You fail it numerous times. And in Florida, your third time failing, you've got to go to remediation for $2,000. And guess what? The remediation sucks ass. Because if the remediation was all that good, it would be a nursing school also. Oh my God, it's really bad. So if you're in Florida, just call me. We'll get you together. Last couple of high-risk situations. If you failed a nursing course in nursing school, like one of your classes, you failed maternity, peds, whatever, psych. If you failed something like that, you're at high risk for failing NCLEX. And here's the last one. If you took many tries before you had to pass your HESI and failing it once or twice definitely is pretty high risk. If you failed that HESI a couple times, don't think you're going to be ready for NCLEX the minute you pass your HESI. No, it's telling you there's a reason why you failed. Now listen, I really hope this helped this six month review on where we're going with this NGN NCLEX. I hope you didn't you know, schedule your test in the next week or so. I really hope it's not tomorrow because you can't even reschedule. If it's not tomorrow, please reschedule your test. Learn some of this stuff. Put a little bit more attention in these subjects that I told you are high failure areas, procedures, which is reduction of risk, infectious disease, pharmacology, and physiologic adaptation, which is content or videos online. Put more emphasis on those subjects and then reschedule that test. Something that bothers me is when I talk to you on the phone, you often don't know when your expiration date for your ATT is. The authorization to test is emailed to you from the NCSBN. The minute you get it, you ought to look at the expiration date and you ought to schedule your test for the week before that. That's it. Stop trying to take this test right away when nothing has really changed and especially stop this every 45 day crap. That's the soonest you can take it, but that does not make sense in most people. <sighs> Deuces, I love you. I hope this helped. Give me a call, 216-410-0936, or you can email me at shellysandclexprep at gmail.com. Deuces, I'm out, and I hope that helped.